Amen. Amen. Wow, that was beautiful. Thank you. What an appropriate song for the new year. Yeah, thank you, Levi and Ben. Well, happy new year, y'all. Uh, we're kind of limping into the new year. <clears throat> I'm probably about 70%. I've just had a, it's not COVID, just a really bad head cold and just lots of drainage and all that. Yuck, uh, all week. And so uh, I'm better, but I've been gargling NyQuil, so I'm feeling really good. <laughs> all right. Uh. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> we'll see how this message turns out. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm seeing two of Hal, I don't understand. Uh, um, anyway, um, where was I going? I, I, by the way, I didn't say that, uh, tell you that we had a great time caroling uh, this year. And I remember before we went on uh, that Wednesday night in November, I'm sorry, December, uh, uh, that I just say, Lord, I hope we have 10. And we did have 10. And it was really good. It was a very precious time. And it was uh, uh, very good. So thank you all that uh, you, you guys that went. And maybe next year more of you can go. But it was very, very good. Okay. The title of my scripture is New Scriptures for the New Year. And... Um, Every passage that we're going to look at or scripture is going to have new or renew or renewal or renewing, something like that in the scriptures. And so this is a new year. And so uh, we're, standing, we're standing on the portal of, you know, of a, a new year that hasn't been written yet. And so I think that's um, very fascinating because, it, you know, we have opportunity. We have 365 days of opportunities to let others see Jesus in us and to minister for the Lord and make a difference for the kingdom of God. And so I believe that God wants to do some new things in your life this year. But before I get into that, on my points, I want to just uh, go over some New Year's predictions. And uh, these are predictions that are not really far out. I mean, there have been, remember when you, the National Enquirer used to be around and there was these like, crazy predictions like aliens will come to earth and start a fast food burger chain in Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas and call it the far out burger, right? Or something like that. They used to have crazy things like this. But this is really things that they believe that are in the works and some of them have already kind of been in the works, but they think they're going to get started this year. Okay. In 2023, driverless cars will become a reality. So they're saying that this is the year it may happen. You know, you order a pizza from Pizza Hut, driverless car comes up, little robot comes to your door and gives you your pizza, goes back and the car takes off or something. I don't know. I don't know if I would, really, would you want to be in a driverless limousine? I, I, I don't know. That really scares me. But anyway, they're saying that they're going to start out in some of the bigger cities where there's lots of traffic. Okay. I don't know. Also, there's new technology that will allow brain to computer interfacing. That sounds really sci-fi that your brain can communica communicate with the computer and the, uh, the computer will communicate with your brain. That sounds really strange. Also, instead of st smartphones, a lot of people are going to have 5G augmented reality eyeglasses. I don't know what that's going to be like, but eyeglasses that are kind of like smart eyewear and they replace your glasses and you can speak and talk and your, your lens of your glasses are your screens. I don't know. That sounds really wild. In food, they say mushrooms, mood food, and kimchi will find a new popularity. So if you like kimchi, it's coming back. Mood food, I don't know. You can look that up, but it's like it tastes good, but it also helps your mood. I don't know. Some of y'all need that. I can tell by looking at you. No. Um, in fashion, in fashion, it says baggy jeans and bubble skirts will make a comeback. So, really, I'm ready for baggy jeans, you know. Skinny jeans, there's just one problem. You got to be skinny, right? But baggy jeans, I think, yeah, I can do baggy jeans. Bubble skirts, you g gals are on your own. I don't know. I saw a picture of one. It doesn't look good, but anyway. But to me, the most interesting, and this is really in the works, 
and it's really in the works. It's called smell vision That's right. Let me say it again. It's, you can look it up. It's called smell vision Not only will you see it on your TV, but you will smell it. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's just for us to buy more cartridges. Like I have to buy a scent cartridge, you know, for my TV. But, you know, so if you see somebody giving somebody some roses, you're going to smell roses. If somebody is like frying bacon, who doesn't like that smell of frying bacon? Or, you know, somebody baking cookies, that'll be good. But I don't know if it's a barnyard scene or a sweaty locker room or someone changing a baby's diaper. I don't know if I want to smell that. smell a vision They say it's really, they're trying to make it happen. So uh, I don't know. I don't know. But I, I do know this, whether or not smell a vision happens or not. I believe that God wants to do a new thing in your life. I really do. And we're going to go through some of that uh, as we get into the message. But before I do that, let me just have a word of prayer. Okay, y'all pray for me. Lord, I just ask for your blessing. And uh, Lord, I'm just going to stand upon that verse. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I just pray for everyone that they're going to receive a special blessing by being here this morning. And Lord, it is always my prayer and the prayer of those that follow you. That if there's anyone that's here in this sanctuary that doesn't know you as the Lord and Savior. Or someone watching on social media that, that has not received you as their savior i pray that they would do that before this message is ended and i pray this in jesus holy name amen <clears throat> the first passage that i want us to look at and number one is new god wants to do a new thing in your life the the verse that goes with that is isaiah it's isaiah 43 18 through 19 it says, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The context is different, but the application to us today is the same. Back then, it was talking about the fact that that new thing that God was going to do in Israel, they were looking forward to the Messiah, that we're going to have a new leader, and he was uh, going to bring forth a new covenant, and grace would replace the uh, the old covenant law. So that was the new thing that was that that Isaiah the prophet was talking about, looking forward to that. He was going to do a new thing, but it also has applications to us today. God is always wanting to do a new thing in your life. And, you know, I started to make the, the, this point, God may want to do a new thing in your life. And I thought, no, 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 no. He wants to do a new thing in your life. How do I know that? Because he wants us to be conformed into the image of Christ. So can any of us say, I'm just like Christ? I, you know, I pray enough. I give enough. I, I serve enough. I, I you know, I, I witness enough. I do all these things like Christ. No, we all have room to grow, right? We all have room to grow, to grow. And so that means that God is wanting to do a new thing in your life that will make you more like Jesus Christ. That makes sense, right? Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, God wants to do that new thing in our life. But there's also some other applications here that we can apply to our life today. And, in the, and let me just say it like this. Here's an, another application. If God wants to do a new thing in your life, don't become trapped by your past. God can help you overcome your past failures, your past setbacks, and, and your past mistakes. Do you believe he can do that? A lot of people feel trapped in the past and they go, well, you know, I've really heard people say that. Well, I don't believe that God can really help me because he doesn't know what I've done. Oh, yes, he does. Or, well, he does know what I've done, but it's too bad. It's just too bad. And, and I can't be one of those church people. I can't be one of those, you know, people that, that go to church and, and talk about Jesus because I know what I've done. He can free you from those chains, those, that, those chains of bondage. That's what he did to Saul who became the apostle Paul. 
He who killed uh, and, prison, and, and imprisoned Christians, he freed them from that. And so a practical way that you can approach this is tell God that you're open to him to do a new work in your life. And I don't know what that new work is, but just be open to it. Because, you know, you, I mean, who knows what it's going to be, but just be open to that. No matter what your age, just be open that God can do a new work in your life. And that's kind of exciting. And sometimes it's a little scary, you know. Uh, he's going to send me the deepest part of Africa or something or to China or, you know. N listen, just say, God, listen, whatever God's plans are for you, they're going to be the best ever. And the happiest people that I've ever known are people that have surrendered completely to God and are serving him wherever he plants them. Another thing is this, is don't set limitations on what God can do in your life. Don't you live your life with low expectations towards God? Because all of us sometimes get into this mindset, my Christian life, my walk with God is the same old, same old, same old, right? We sometimes just kind of think that. Just say, Lord, I know that you can do anything and I'm open to anything that you want to do in my life. Help me just to just be completely available, you know? God doesn't look for great people with great ability. Usually he looks pe for people with great availability. And if you're available, then he will give you that ability. Moses said, oh, I can't go do that. I can't talk to Pharaoh. I can't speak well, blah, 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 blah. He said, listen, Moses, um, I gave you a mouth. I formed your tongue. You know, I can, I can help you. And he did help him through Aaron, his brother. Uh, I, like, I love Ephesians 3, 20, 21. It says, now to him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly. I like that. It means way, way over the top. Above all that we can ask or think. According to the power that works in us. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations. That means the generation of 2023 forever and ever. Amen. Wow. So God can do, God can blow the top off if he wants to. And I pray every day that God will send revival, that God will send revival to our nation. And let that revival start in me. Let that revival start in, in Two Lakes. Let that revival start in Bethany, wherever. And so God can also create provisions and, and opportunities where there are obstacles and hostilities. Go back to that verse 19, 18 and 19. You said... He said, I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Those are obstacles. There may be a place in your life that looks like a desert. There may be a place in your life that looks like a wilderness. And you know, the Judean wilderness was very formidable. I mean, deep canyons, you go, I mean, up and down. And I mean, you just had a difficult time going anywhere in the Judean wilderness. And the desert, you didn't want to go to the desert. There's no food there because there's no water there. There's no nuts and berries. And you got to have water and it's very hot. And you know what God said? Listen, those obstacles and those problems in your life, I can make a road in the wilderness. And I've gone hiking and I've gone hunting up in the mountains. It's a lot easier to walk a logging road than it is to climb through boulders and rocks and branches. I'll tell you that. And God says, you may think there's no way that you can go in that direction with your life or that direction in your life. He said, I'm going to make a road. I'm just going to make a road for you. And I'm going to, that desert that you don't think you can go through, I am going to put a stream there, a deep stream of water, and you can go there. I will make a way. So, you know, ask God to show you new ways to serve him. Ask, ask him to maximize your spiritual gifts and tell God just simply that I want to make a difference in this world for you. I want to make a difference for you in this world. Hallelujah. Number two, number two, renew. Not just new, but renew. God wants to renew your spirit. Well, how's he going to do that? Well, let's read Psalm 51.10. <clears throat> Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. Now this, is, the context of this is very sobering. Because this psalm was written, Psalm 51 was written by David. And it's a psalm of repentance. 
It's a psalm that he wrote after Nathan, the prophet, confronts David with his sins. And they were great. He had committed adultery with Bathsheba and gotten her pregnant. And in order to try to hide that, he arranged with Joab, the commander of his army, to put her husband, Uriah the Hittite, at the, he, at the very center of the battle and then withdraw from him so that he would be killed. And he was killed. And so he committed uh, adultery with Bathsheba. He killed Uriah the Hittite. And now he's been convicted of his sin by Nathan the prophet, which God sent to him. And he's saying, God create in me a clean heart again and renew a steadfast or a right spirit within me. Because I'm, I'm way off path. So what, it, what it's saying is this. A foundation prerequisite for God to do something new in your life is for you to have a clean heart. And, and that's sometimes difficult because there's, this world is so ugly and evil and smutty sometimes. And there's just filth everywhere. I was trying to watch a movie the other night. And I thought, well, I haven't watched this movie. And it's an old movie. And like, whoop, where's the chain? And, you know, stop it, stop it. This got really bad. It got really bad. It's the stuff that nobody should see. And I thought, man, I can't find anything, you know. And so that's how this world is. We have to create, ask God to get a clean, our spirit has to be clean. He will not bless a mess. If your heart is not clean, if you're not living like you should, if you're harboring uh, intentional sin, a habitual sin, and you're not letting go of it, God can't bless that. He can't do something new in your life until you let go of that sin. God will not reward those who compromise his righteous standards or justify their sins. And you know, it's so easy to justify your sins. Everybody's doing it. Well, they have a lot more than I do. Well, this little thing won't hurt. Nobody's going to notice. Nobody's going to see it. Even though no one else knows about your secret sins, God knows about them, right? God knows about them. And so we have to, we have to ask God to, to look at our hearts. Because if you read the Old Testament, and we've been going through the minor prophets, we see that the people of Israel, they were going, oh, Lord, bless me, bless me. But God is saying, you are defrauding one another. You're stealing. You're lying. You're not, you know, making your sacrifices to me. You're disregarding me. And then at the same time, you're asking me to bless you. I won't, I won't do that until you get your heart right with me. Psalm 66, 18 says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. I mean, he will hear your prayer, but he won't hear it in order to answer it. And so we need to have courage in 2023. In Psalm 139, it says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Every now and then we have to say, Lord, uh, you don't need a, I don't need a cat scan, but I need a Holy Spirit scan. And I need you just to kind of go over my life and maybe a little scary, but give me a report. Tell me, tell me how I'm doing. Is there something that I'm doing that's not right? Because God wants you to get you a clean heart, a right heart, a right spirit, a steadfast spirit in you. And then he can do something new in your life. Then he can start blessing you. Uh, a clean heart is a must if God is going to, to renew you. And I love Acts 3.19. Acts 3.19 is such a, a beautiful uh, verse. Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. So that times of refreshing, I love that, refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And that word refreshing, when you look it up in the Greek, it means, you know, you've been like hot and confined and like in this hot box and you just come out and take a deep breath of clean, fresh, cool air. That's what it means. And so many people are in this world and they're just like, eh, they're just compressed and they feel pushed about on every side. And God wants to refresh us. I, I want to be refreshed. And so whether, yes, we need to confess our sins uh, and repent when we're converted, but even after we walk with God, we're children of God, we still must repent and confess our sins before the Lord. 
uh, he will give us a right spirit. Uh, we, we should no longer be double-minded. We should no uh, longer try to serve God and mammon. A lot of pe people will compromise their values and their morals uh, for money. They'll do anything. They, va they value money over the things of God. And just we just need to say, Lord, uh, I just rededicate myself to you anew. I rededicate myself to you. And in this verse, in, in Psalm 51, a couple of verses later, it talks about the joy of salvation. He, he lost his joy. And sometimes we lose our joy, don't we? As Christians, we lose our joy. And he said, restore unto me the joy of your salvation. Or if you personalize it, he's like, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. I've lost it. I've, you know, and when you lose that joy, you need to ask the Lord, look at me and search my heart. Help me to find out why I have lost my joy. Why have I lost my joy? And usually there's some kind of sin accompanied with that. Or you become lukewarm. You've lost your first love. Whatever it is, you need to, to ask God. Say, God, restore my joy. Give me a clean heart and renew a right, steadfast spirit within me. Number three, <clears throat> renewed. New, renew, and renewed. Day by day, you are being inwardly, inwardly renewed by the Holy Spirit. That's who, you are a spiritual being. That's really who you are inside a physical body. And one day, your spiritual body at the resurrection will glorify your physical body. That's what's going to happen. It's not the other way around. That which you really are, you are really created in the image of God, and He is a spiritual being. And so you are mainly, first, uh, first and foremost, a spiritual being in a physical body. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18 says, Therefore we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man or the spiritual person is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more and exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The key thought here is therefore we do not lose heart. We do not lose heart. No matter what this New, Year's, uh, New Year holds, and I do hope it's better than 2020, 2021, 2022, because we've had some three really crazy years with everything that's been going on in our world. Uh, but no matter what happens, God is going to be there for us. He will not forsake us. His promises will still hold and be true. And that's why I really like that New Year's song. I, I, I was still trying to find the, the melody, but... It's a beautiful song. Did you like it? The, the message was so profound. It was so true. Because God is still going to be on his throne. So what this passage really tells us. That even though we are aging physically. Some of us can really identify with that. All right. And even though we are suffering from disabilities or diseases. And even though we are being temporarily afflicted. Whether, going, whether it's circumstances or oppression, and even though we are living in a fallen world that is temporary and physical, we will not lose heart. We're not going to lose hope in 2023 because we're trusting in God. Because our inward man is being constantly renewed by the Holy Spirit. Now, let me tell you this. That word renewed, I looked it up. You know, every now and then I, I look up a Greek word. I want to I'm gonna just kind of study that word. It was really awesome. This is what it means. It doesn't mean just kind of maintaining the status quo. This is what you'll read if, if you look up that word. To renew by moving forward from one stage to a higher and more developed one. So you're moving forward, but you're going upward. I'm pressing on to higher ground. That's what it means. So you're being renewed of new improved version. You're going up. You're going upward. So God is always striving in us to make us more like him. To make us 
uh, where we walk within the Spirit more and more, where we are filled with the Holy Spirit more and more. And so we do not lose heart because our inward man is being constantly, constantly renewed day by day. Everything we endure is working to produce a glorious future for us. Therefore, we do not focus on the here and now, but through the eyes of faith, we see the eternal kingdom of God. So I wrote a little sentence. I said, even though we live in the here and now, we as Christians live for the there and then. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. We, see, we look, we, we have a thousand mile vision. We don't just look at what's happening right here, right now. We look far away and to the, the halls of eternity. We, we see the pearly gates. We see the streets of gold. We see the eyes of Jesus when he's looking at us face to face. That's what we do. And so we're living here in the here. Yeah, we're here in the here and now. But because we have eyes of faith, we look at those things that are not seen and we live for the there and then when we will be with the Lord and in his eternal kingdom. So we are renewed when we have a correct, correct spiritual perspective of life, when we're filled with the Holy Spirit. And this renewal brings us comfort and peace and joy and hope and a blessed assurance of our victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and the greatest way to do that is to be renewed. It's just to uh, spend time in prayer in worshiping God. I really felt the Lord's presence here when we were worshiping this morning. Those, those songs really spoke to my heart. And just like Moses, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, He'd been with the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights. And the presence of God was so strong in him that he reflected the glory of God. And he was glowing. His face was glowing. And people like could not even look at him. And so when we get with the Lord, we are renewed. Our inner man, our inner person, our spiritual person is renewed when we get alone with the Lord. And, and, when, we, and when we get with him, we do not lose heart. Because he's renewing us day by day. Number four. Renewing. The reading and understanding of God's word is essential for the renewing of your mind. Only then can you rise above the cultural waywardness of this world. It's way, way, way wayward. And experience God's best for your life. I want God's best for my life. But in order for that to happen, I, na I need to think like God thinks, I need to be transformed. I don't need to be conformed to this world. I need to be transformed by the renewing of my mind, which is the word of God. In Romans 12, 2, it says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I'll get to that last part in a little bit because that's very important. Don't be conformed like this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, many people, um, I mean, our minds were given to us to think, right? And so there are many people that think like the world thinks. They value what the world values and they act like the world. But we as Christ followers, we are to think like God thinks. And we are to value what God values. And we are to act like God would act. Interesting. You know why? It's because our minds have been renewed and transformed by the word of God. And that word, um, but be transformed, that word in the Greek is metamorphuste. Metamorphuste. And you know what that English word is. It's metamorphosis. And we use that like when a caterpillar changes into a butterfly, that's a metamorphosis. It, is, it changes from one form to another. And so we are to change from a worldly mind to a spiritual mind, from a fleshly mind to a holy God-seeking mind. That's what we're to do. And it needs to be a daily process. It needs to be a continual renewing as we stand upon the word of God. And why do we do it? 
that you may prove, and that word prove really means to demonstrate or live out or experience, that you may experience what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So I want to do that. I want to, I want to experience that which is good, the good will of God, because the good will of God means that I'm going to be blessed. The good will of God is the blessing of God. And, and the good there means that which emanates and originates from God and is empowered by God. God is the source of all goodness. You know that, right? Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights. So the reason that our minds are renewed and transformed is so that we can experience the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And when we demonstrate it, we'll be a witness to others. And when we live it out, we're going to please God. And when we experience it ourselves, we're going to know, know the joy and the peace and the blessings of God. That's what we're going to know. So acceptable means to be uh, pleasing to God and perfect. That word again means in the Greek means consummated in all of its parts, especially used of Christian character. Mature or completely de developed by going through the necessary process. What is the necessary process? The necessary process is discipleship. Nobody starts out as a mature Christian. Nobody starts out as a mature disciple. It's a growth process. And sometimes it's painful. Just like many of you when you were teenagers. I remember my, when I went through growing spurts. My legs would ache and I'd have to rub my legs. My legs hurt because I was going from like 5'9 to whatever, uh, getting taller. And so uh, I remember those growing pains. And so sometimes it's, it's, it's not easy, but it's necessary that you go through that so that you will be in the perfect will of God. You will be all that God wants you to be. You will be the person that God originally intended for you to be. Now, that won't be consummated really until you see Jesus face to face. That won't be consummated. But we're in that process right now. We're, we're kind of in that chrysalis right now. And, and, and some of us are kind of getting out of it. You know, I would hate to go through life as all my life as a caterpillar, knowing that I was supposed to be become a butterfly, you know. And there's a lot of people that even though they've been Christians for a lot of years, they're still... 70 years old, spiritually speaking, running around in diapers. No, they haven't grown in Christ. They haven't gone through the process. They haven't surrendered and let God grow them. And, and so the reason we need to be transformed by the word of God is so that we may experience and demonstrate what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God in our lives. And that's going to be awesome. That's going to be awesome. When, when God does something, it's, 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 it's glorious. It's a lot better than what I can figure out for my life. God's plans are always better than your plans, all right? Every now and then they'll coincide, all right? But at times he'll say, go over here, and you're like, well, but, but, oh, okay. Ah, and you realize over here was a cliff, okay? <laughs> you may not find that out until eternity, but up here is the riches of God's blessings, all right? So, Anyway, let's just review. I want to review these, 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 these four points, and then I want to wrap up this morning. New, and I truly believe that God wants to do a new thing in your life. Number two, God wants to renew your spirit by having a clean heart. Three, day by day you're being inwardly renewed by the Holy Spirit, therefore you don't lose heart. And number four, Renewing the reading and understanding of God's word is essential for the renewing of your mind. Only then can you rise above the cultural waywardness of this world and experience God's best for your life. I want to experience God's best for my life. I don't want to fall prey to the devil's snares because he's always setting traps for us and he makes it look really good. He sets the bait where it looks really good. But if you go there, you're going to fall into his pit. That's what's going to happen. So when you follow the Lord and, follow, and read his word, you're going to be blessed. And if you haven't ever read through the Bible, maybe you can make that your, your, your goal for the year, a resolution to read through the entire Bible. Yeah, to start reading it chapter by chapter or get one of those little uh, guides that will help you 
to read a little bit of the Bible every day and finish it in a year. New Year's Day is also a time for resolutions. And uh, people make all kinds of resolutions. And I, I read something funny. Someone said, may your troubles in the new year last as long as your resolutions. I'm like, hmm, okay. <laughs> I don't know about that. All right. <clears throat> But for those who know Christ, uh, it means just walking with the Lord every day. The Bible says Enoch walked with God and he pleased God. And, and a man one asked Socrates, he said, how do I get to Mount Olympus? And Socrates simply said, just make sure every step that you take goes in that direction. <laughs> Pretty simple. But for us as Christians, in 2023, just make every step that you take go in the direction of God's will. Pray about your decisions. Pray about everything in all your ways, okay? You know, take them to the Lord in all your ways. Acknowledge Him in all those ways. And for those of you that don't know Christ, whether you're here, you're watching on social media, but you're considering giving your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and, and making Him your Lord and Savior, I encourage you to do that today and don't delay. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. The devil always says, tomorrow, tomorrow, the day after next is the day you can get right with God. No. Several years ago, I heard a tragic story about an 18-year-old girl who took her life on New Year's Day. And she left a very simple note behind explaining why she did it. And she just wrote this. She said, I agreed that if something did not happen in the year to make my life worth living, I'd quit living. That wasn't asking too much, was it? She felt like her life wasn't worth living. It wasn't getting any better. And so she took her life. I'm afraid that she was looking to the world to make her life better. And a lot of people are looking to the world to make their life better rather than to the Lord to make their life better. And the way our lives become better is we change from the inside out. That's what the gospel is about. We change from the inside out, not from the outside in. It doesn't work that way. The Lord comes into our heart and makes us brand new. Jesus said, the thief does not come except to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and that they may have it more abundantly. You see, Satan is the thief. And he comes to steal the truth. He kills our hopes and he destroys people for all eternity. Just not here, but also for all eternity. But Jesus gives us abundant life. And here's another new scripture. Jesus, uh, the, the Bible says, If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. If you're in Christ, you are a new creation and all things become new. And I just want to challenge someone, if you don't know Jesus Christ... You can become a new creation. You can have a new start, a new beginning, a new everything in Jesus Christ for 2023. And I was reading about Franklin Graham in one of his uh, crusades this past year. And one thing he said I thought really struck me. He said this at one of his crusades. He said, if you want to know that your soul is safe and secure in the hands of God for all eternity, stand up right now. If you want to know that your soul is safe and secure in the hands of God for all eternity, stand up right now. And I believe hundreds of people stood up at that crusade. I'm not going to ask you to stand up here. I'm not even, I can't see you, so I don't know if you're standing up, if you're watching on social media. But I will ask you to say a simple prayer. If you want to know that your soul is safe and secure in the hands of God for all eternity, you need to know the Lord Jesus Christ because the Father sent him to be our Savior and Lord to save us from the penalty of sin and the presence of sin and the power of sin. And so just say this simple prayer with me. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, please come into my life and forgive me of my sins. I now accept you as my Lord and Savior Thank you for loving me so much that you died on the cross for me. Thank you for giving me a new beginning in 2023. Thank you 
that I have a new family, a new heavenly father, and a new way of life, an abundant life. And I pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. If you prayed that simple, simple prayer, you are a new creation. Tell somebody if you're uh, at, at home, uh, sitting with somebody, you, you say, I just received the Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior. If you're by yourself, call somebody on the phone. Say, I've accepted Jesus Christ on New Year's Day in 2023. If you're here this morning, you need to make any decision. You just come as we stand. Would you stand? You need to make any decision. You come this morning as we sing. Take my life, lead me, Lord. Take my life, you need to come. lead you come. me, Lord. Make my life useful to Thee. Take my life, lead me, Lord. Take my life, lead me, Lord. Make my life useful to Thee. Take my life, teach me, Lord. Take my life, teach me, Lord. Make my life useful to thee. Let this be your prayer for 2023. Take my life, teach me, Lord. Take my life, teach me, Lord. Make my life useful to thee. Wait. Would you be seated for some announcements, please? Thank you, thank you. Brother Ben, the thought just occurred to me. Each one of us spiritually, no matter where we are, we can make this resolution. Become a better me in 2023. Wherever we are, whatever, where, wherever, wherever. You guys, let's go through your bulletins. We got a couple of things I want to make sure that uh, we get, that we talk about. Uh, the worship service for tonight, because of the illnesses, has been canceled. There is no service tonight. And then uh, Arlene was out for surgery last week. She may be in the office tomorrow. And Brother Ben is fighting his head cold like we talked about. So unless it's something really dire, probably stay away from the office tomorrow or call just to make sure one of them will be there uh, for tomorrow. But Brother Ben thinks he'll be better and back to normal on Tuesday. Uh, but call before you go to the office tomorrow. And remember, you've got your deacons and you've got me. If, you, if there's something comes up that you need to talk to somebody about, just give somebody else in your, in your family a call. We're all available. Uh, let's see. The Wednesday night prayer meeting will be at 615. Uh, you see our financial summary down there. Be responsible with your tithes and your offerings. Uh, we're in that Sunday night series. We'll talk about that next week. The Lottie Moon Post Office has not been updated, but we'll get the update from uh, Arlene in the bulletin for next week. Uh, by the way, there are a lot of envelopes out there, so if you didn't pick up your Christmas cards, just make sure out there that, that you get yours before you go. Um, the deacon's breakfast, we didn't have it today. Probably will start on February 1st. I'm sorry, the first Sunday in February. Um, upcoming January activities, you guys see those there. January 15th is the very first one, and that's two weeks from today. Uh, food collection, we are doing the food collection for the Baptist Mission. Our church does that today. I'm sorry, we do that in January. So starting today, the shopping cart is out there, but if you want to bring stuff that overflows that cart, we'll take it. Don't, don't just bring one or two things because there's not a lot of room. We got plenty, plenty of people can use what we bring. Uh, Norma pointed out to me, uh, happy birthday, Vicki. It's not really the first, it's the fifth. She said, make sure if I'm going to mention it, I get the date right. Cause, all right. So uh, she's on the, let's see, on the, the zinger for the week. A day full of many hours just waiting for your using. And there are many ways to spend them. So be careful of your choosing. That's pretty good. Be careful of our choosing. Uh, let's see. We've got a couple of memory verses we've already sang and we've already said throughout the service. But we're going to say them together as our family. Why is today going to be a great day? And through Jesus in us, we can do what? During the times of illness, during the times of money running out or food being low, that verse becomes, it seems to become more relevant to us. It shouldn't, but it does. And we just have to remember to call out on, on, on God, call out on Jesus. 
just like um, Peter did in the boat when Jesus sent the, sent the disciples off the shore and he came walking in the morning on the water. Peter saw him, said, if that's you, tell me to come to you and I will. And Jesus said, come. Peter got up and started walking on the water to Jesus. He looked at the wind and he started sinking. He said, Lord, help me. He cried out, Lord, help me. And God, Jesus helped him. We just got to remember that, to call out to God to help us in our, times of, in our times of need. If you are a visitor today for the very first time, I recognize everybody here on social media. Uh, let us know that you tuned in today in some way and uh, we want to get a record of your attendance and we're going to reach out to you and see if we can't get you to become a permanent member, not just a visitor. Any other announcements? Anything that we want to talk about? Yeah. Okay, Lonnie gave me something. I'm not, I wasn't really sure about it, so here. It says the Lester... Is that a place? Okay, so there's a, the Lester Singing Family Group. Tomorrow, 7 p.m., the Oklahoma United Gospel Music Association. That's all it said. They're going to be here? Okay, so tomorrow night, 7 p.m., we're going to have a concert. Okay, that, 7 p.m. The Lester's will be here tomorrow night. 7 p.m. We got that? Excellent. Anything else? You know, in an alternate universe, this old married couple are eating lunch at that airport cafe down there, and the man is just henpecked, and his name just happens to be Hal, and he's sitting there, and he just says, I want to ride in a helicopter. And his wife, her name just coincidentally was Myra, she says, we ain't got any money. Be quiet. Eat your crackers. And the next week, they come back, and and uh, he says, I want to ride in a helicopter. And she says, I told you before, we ain't got any money. Be quiet. $20 is $20. It's too expensive. Eat your soup. This goes on for a few weeks. A helicopter pilot is in the next table a few weeks later overhearing this conversation. Tired of hearing her say, we ain't got any money. $20 is $20. So he comes to the table and he says, listen, I'm a helicopter pilot. If you too will promise to be quiet, not a peep, I will take you up in a ride in my helicopter and it will be free. But if I hear even so much as a, as a giggle out of you, it's going to be $20. So they agree and they get in and they go and they're swooping through the air and going over the majestic mountains of Bethany and over the rivers of Oklahoma City and they land about an hour later and, and the pilot turns around to congratulate him because he never heard a peep and the wife is not there. And he says, did she get out already? No, she fell out. He says, what is wrong with you? Why didn't you say anything? $20 is $20. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'll leave you with that laughter. Stand and join me as I pray us out of here. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for what you do for us. Father, laughter comes from you. Joy comes from you. We pray that as we leave here today, you will guide us. May we follow your, your lead. May we feel your presence in us until we come back together again. Wherever we are, may we have the courage to testify, the courage to be a disciple that you want us to be. It is in your holy and great name, Jesus, that we give you all of us. If you prayed that prayer this morning, to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, then please contact us here uh, at Two Lakes Baptist Church so we can pray for you and so we can uh, maybe send you some information to help you grow in your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And our contact information is on the screen. You can call us, you can write us, uh, you can email us, or if you would like to become a media member or donate to our church, you can go to our website at twolakesbaptist.church. And you can find more out, uh, information out about our church. And uh, we just want to be in contact with you. We want you to know that we care for you and love you. So until next time, may God bless you and keep you and give you peace.